Chaos theory, uh, broadly uh, defined, is extreme sensitivity to initial conditions. That given a very small difference in initial conditions, the same system will behave after a very short time totally differently. I think the chaos theory in psychology is not that different from a, 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 a physics viewpoint, except that we have the human component. Um, chaos basically says, can we make a long-term prediction of any kind of a system? Which brings us to the notion of the butterfly effect, a seemingly insignificant event that causes a chain of events over time that create unpredictable outcomes. Well, all of life is unpredictable, but who's to say what is an insignificant event? With the chaos theory, there are so many infinite possibilities that it, it's very, very difficult to say, oh yeah, because your mother did this to you as a child, and because of your potty training when you were two, this is the effect. It is not linear. The chaos theory, if it were linear, would be very easy to deal with in terms of a psychotherapy, but it's not linear. It has to do with a, a, a tremendous and infinite complex number of things within the system that occurred back at the time that that person is going back to. Edward Lorenz was a professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology who studied the dynamics of atmospheres, in particular the Earth's atmosphere. And he made a simple model of the Earth's atmospheric dynamics, or at least he abstracted a simple mathematical model which contained some essential features of the dynamics of atmospheres. And yet this atmosphere, or this atmosphere model, this toy model, was capable of exhibiting chaotic behavior. Now you'll see a type of motion that's very clearly unpredictable, irregular. This is chaotic motion. So we start off with the pendulum undergoing what looks like, initially, somewhat regular motion. And then all of a sudden, the lower ball starts sinking, and this enables the upper one to swing over the top into circulation. And very rapidly, in less than half a minute, the bottom pendulum and the top pendulum separate and do their independent dances. Again, I want to emphasize that what we are looking at are two independent motions of identical dynamical systems that were started with very close but not exactly the same initial conditions. And over a very, very short time, only over a few swings, they diverge completely from each other in behavior. Without a doubt, chaos is the natural state of affairs of human beings. We, we often think about control in our lives. As a matter of fact, the existential viewpoint is that we're not born, but we're thrown into the world. We're thrown into a rather chaotic world. Now, chaos I'm using here more as a lay term of chaos, not as a, a chaos in terms of chaos theory. But we're thrown into a rather chaotic, frenzied, wild, uh, unmanageable state. And then we have to make choices moment by moment in order to make sense out of the chaos into which we're thrown. Birth to death is a ride. By its very definition, it is unpredictable. There are no guarantees. Shit happens. Curveballs get thrown at us. Wonderful things happen. That's, and how we deal with it is who we are and who we become. That's the ride. And the problem is that when we try to control that which is out of our control, we become an incredibly anxiety-prone society. And that's, that's what gets us into trouble. We have very chaotic systems. We go about our everyday life and we're bombarded with inputs. And the smallest input can change. For example, you, uh, you hear something, uh, you're very sensitive to hearing things, especially if they're about you. You hear something about you which you might suspect is slightly derogatory. This can send you, even if you're fairly well balanced, into a temporary, let's say, very minor depression. 
can color that part of your day, a short part of your day, in which case you may decide to buy a candy bar to pick you up because chocolate makes some people feel better. Now, how can you make predictions on a long-term basis given the finite uh, components of a system, the, the, the complexity of a human being, how one human being sees something, how you, one human being reacts to something. There are so many uh, infinite possibilities of the effect of one person on another, we cannot make long-term predictions. To want to invite information that we have spent a lifetime avoiding knowing because we are terrified of how that may change the system, how that may create chaos in the system, is a very compelling challenge. We have all these small inputs. We don't normally think of them that way, but if you, if you sometimes feel a little bit depressed or a little bit elated, and you think about it, it may be some very, very small thing that made you that way. Just looking at uh, something that's extremely pretty, which catches your eye and so on, may make you feel much better. Uh, and that can, so, so we're extremely sensitive to that. And I would say we're chaotic. We're a chaotic system. If I'm afraid of um, being mugged in New York City walking down the street, I will become very, very cautious. As I become cautious, I become a target. Therefore, I am inviting the very thing that I'm afraid of. So yes, I think that chaos uh, and the fear of the chaos actually invites more chaos. We all want to control our lives in a way that we feel safe. And hopefully we make good decisions about feeling safe in life and feeling that we choose partners that help us feel safe and trusting and we make decisions that help us feel safe and trusting. Beyond that, buckle in, pay attention, know who you are, what is, and what is a sense of self? I think, I feel, I value, and get ready to, to grow. Is chaos bad? If we could live in a society of understanding chaos and living with chaos. And what we're really talking about is a concept in psychology called spontaneity. Being able to go with the moment, being able to stay with what is rather than control that which might be. So we could con if we could flow with, if we could stay with the moment, if we could stay in the here and now, which is another psychological term, if we could be with what is, we wouldn't need necessarily to attempt so much control of what might be in the future.